Hey there, Polycasters, Rob here. Today on the show, we're gonna be looking at how to test elements that require Ajax to talk to their backend using a web component tester. That made no sense. Let me back up a little. <laughs> Today on the show, we're gonna be continuing our series on web component tester by looking at how to test elements that require Ajax. Now, if you go check out the documentation for web component tester, you'll see up there at the top, there's a list of libraries that come with Web Component Tester itself. So we've got Mocha, that is our testing framework. Uh, we've got Chai, which is our assertion library, and we'll be talking about that in a bit. We've got Async and Lodash. These are libraries, they're just sort of like utilities. They help us do things like manage callbacks and do fancy functional stuff. And lastly, we've got Synon. And Synon is a little library that lets you uh, mock XHR requests, create fake servers, do really anything you'd want to do if you wanted to simulate an actual server. And rather than like create some brand new component or anything like that, I'm just going to write unit test for a pre-existing element. So I'm actually going to use uh, one of the Polymer team's elements, Iron Ajax, and I'm just going to write test against that. So that way I don't have to come up with like a weird contrived example because I'm lazy. So what I'm going to do in my test file is start off by importing Iron Ajax. And then I'm going to write a little test fixture for it. So inside this test fixture, I'm calling Iron Ajax, or I'm, I've got a little Iron Ajax tag, I should say. And its URL is set to responds to get with JSON, right? And then after that, I'm going to create the suite that's going to hold all of my unit tests. So I'm just going to call my suite Iron Ajax just so it's kind of like a nice general thing. And I'm going to create some global variables in here. Uh, these are just going to keep track of the Iron Ajax tag, of the requesters we're sending it out, of the Synon server we're going to set up. Nothing too fancy here. After that is created, I'm going to call a setup function. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and start to build my Synon server. So I'll call Synon fake server create. That's going to return an instance of the server. And then I can call this respond with method. And what that's going to let me do is basically set up routes that I want the fake server to respond to. So what I'm saying here is when there's a get request for the route response to get with JSON, I want it to respond with a status code 200. I want it to send back those response headers that I created up at the top. And lastly, I want to send back this little JSON payload that says success true. Yay! So I've got that squared away. Next thing I'm going to do is create a little teardown function. And in this teardown function, I'm going to tell the server to restore itself, which basically means like clean up after yourself. You know, if you if you created global variables, if there's any shared state, anything like that, just get rid of that. So when we run the next test, it'll be a nice clean slate. OK, so I've got that squared away. Now I can write the suite that's actually going to hold my unit tests. Inside of here, I will call a setup function. I'm going to grab my test fixture and store it in that Ajax variable that I created. And my first test here is just going to verify that the Iron Ajax request is going out and that I'm getting a response back and that the data in that response looks correct. The test message is going to be has seen defaults that love you because it does love you. So my request object is going to call Ajax generate request. And then I can just call server.respond. And this is kind of one of the cool parts about working with Synon. Normally, you would have to, if this was like a real server, you'd have to wait some amount of time, set up an event listener, do some sort of like async test thing to get that response. Here, we can treat it like it's synchronous. And that's really nice. It means our tests are going to be really fast. And after that, I can use expect to inspect the response object that I got back. Now, in the last video, I used assert to inspect my objects. This time, we're using expect. And basically, because we're using chai, we have a few different assertion types that we can use, a few different assertion libraries, if you will. Uh, you can go check out the documentation for chai. Maybe I should like include a link to that or something. Expect just another flavor of assertion, really not too different. What we're doing here is we're first checking that the response is OK. And that means that it wasn't an error. It wasn't null. We got something back. We're checking that it's an object, right? That's what we're expecting to see. And lastly, we're checking that the success property is set to true, OK? This looks OK to me. Uh, let's switch over to the terminal, and we're going to run the WCT command. All right, things are happening. Things are happening. And we get our test back. Awesome. All right, everything's green, looking good. I want to do some more testing, though. I want to test a post request. So I'm going to create a brand new test fixture. 
And this time, I'm again using an Iron Ajax element. I'm setting the method to post, and the URL is response to post with JSON. Just like we did for the get request, we will set up a route in our Synon fake server. So we're going to say that we want it to listen for post request on the route response to post with JSON. And when it hears that, it should send back a 200, same response headers as last time. And this time, the object it sends back is going to say post request is true. Over here in our test, I'll write a brand new suite mm -hmm. for making simple post requests. The first test, I'm actually just going to uh, verify that when I set that method to post, that that is actually setting the XHR method. So I'm not even calling sin on here. I'm just verifying that under the hood, the element does what it expects. After that, I'm going to go ahead and actually ping the sin on server. And I'm going to test uh, that the response is OK. I'm going to test that it is an object. And I'm going to test that post success is equal to true. Right? Well, let's switch over to our terminal. We will run our component tester. And we will wait, waiting on things to happen. Great. So we've got all of our tests are passing. Everything's green. Now, what if those tests weren't passing though? What if one of them had failed? What if it was just like one browser that failed or something weird like that? What would we do? This is where I'm going to show you a little trick here. When we run the web component tester command, we can actually pass it the dash p flag. And what this is going to do is it's going to leave all the browser windows open. And this is really useful because it means we can open up the console for those different browsers. We can inspect them. And if there were errors, they're going to show up there. So here I've got Firefox. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to open the Firefox dev tools. So I'm going to enhance this. And you'll see that I've got my test listed here. But if there were any errors, they would show up there as well. So pretty, pretty helpful little feature there. All right, that covers testing with Ajax with Synon. There's actually a lot more you can do with Synon, but I've definitely given you enough to get started. There's a lot more that I want to cover with Web Component Tester, though. So if there are segments that you are interested in seeing, please leave a comment down below. That way, we can try and make some of those episodes happen. Also, consider clicking that Like button or the Subscribe button if you truly love me. And if you have some questions, you can ping us on a social network of your choosing at hashtag AskPolymer. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Turn your phones off. Gotham needs me. Response codes. I got ahead of myself.